Thank you for joining. Looking at reactive metabolite detection study. My name is Miki Fujishima from Drug Development Solution Center at Sexy Medical. Sexy Genotech and we are sister company. Today, I'd like to introduce our new study, System Trapping, to evaluate reactive metabolite formation. I'd like to talk about the relation between drug-induced liver injury and reactive metabolite. The drug-induced liver injury really is caused by various mechanisms, and it is difficult to predict it accurately in one type of assay. So, conducting various experiments and making a comprehensive judgment leads to accurate de-risk evaluation. This figure is from AstraZeneca in 2012. They did a comprehensive evaluation of the from these studies, like um, transporter inhibition studies, mitochondrial toxicity studies, metabolite dependent toxicity study, and covalent binding study. In this article, they evaluate the predictability of daily. From blue studies, the predictability of daily is only 58%. But by adding current binding study, that is dramatically improved. The predictability is 94%. Current binding study is a study to detect reactive metabolite. So, in this slide, what I want to say, reactive metabolite detection study is very important factor for daily prediction. To evaluate reactive metabolites, most accurate method is covalent binding study. But this study needs radio level test article. Therefore, it is difficult to conduct it in early stage development. Generally, in early stage, trapping study is conducted to evaluate reactive metabolites instead of covalent binding study. The most major trapping study is glutathione trapping. From these situations, this time, we have started to offer system trapping study as an alternative study of glutathione trapping. The features of our system trapping, trapping study are higher quantity, higher throughput, and lower cost. Here, I want to show the metabolic pathway of nephazodon and talk about the trapping mechanism shortly. Nephazodon is known as a compound to create reactive metabolite. It is metabolized by CYP3A4 and create quinonemine and benzquinone. These compounds are very reactive, difficult to detect, and cause toxicity by binding protein or something in our body. In our body, glutathione is working as a detoxification of these compounds. By adapting glutathione, reactive metabolites are detoxified, stabilized, and they become detectable. The Happing study uses this mechanism to detect and quantify reactive metabolites in vitro. This table shows the features of trapping studies. Trapping studies are roughly divided into five types by trapping region and detection method. The first method is using radio level glutathione as a trapping region and detected by HPLC radio detector. Its quantity and throughput is middle. The analysis time is about 30 minutes per only one sample, and the background is high. 
So this is the reason I like the same video. The second method is using Tanshil Glutathione as a trapping reagent. Tanshil Glutathione is a fluorescent reagent. The detection is conducted by HPLC fluorescent detector. Its throughput is high, but the quantitivity is low. In this method, to quantify the concentration of reactive metabolite adapts, the calibration curve is prepared by free tansyl glutathione, not reactive metabolite adapt. The fluorescent intensity of free tansyl glutathione and the adapted form are possibly different. So it may cause a lower quantity. The third method is uh, using radio level glutathione and stable isotope as a trapping reagent. The detection is conducted by LCMSMS and HPLC radio detector. By using stable isotope and LCMSMS, the retention time of reactive metabolite adapt is clearly revealed. And then, the concentration of adduct is quantified by HPLC radio detector. So its quantity is very high, but the throughput is unfortunately low. The same as the first method, there is a method using cysteine. Dropping reagent is radio level cysteine and detected by HPLC radio detector. Same as the first method, its quantity and throughput are real. To maximize quantity and throughput, we establish the last method using radio level system and rigid scintillation counter. The detailed method will be explained later. I also want to mention about the cost. The cost of radio level glutathione is much higher than that of cysteine. So in terms of this, our method is more beneficial than other methods. This slide shows the region and assay procedure of our cysteine trapping. About the region, 50 donor human liver microsomes from sex genotech are used as an enzyme. Four factors are NADPH and UTPCA. Trapping region is radio level system. About acid procedure, first mix region and incubate at 37 degrees for 60 minutes. Then stop the reaction and separate the system adapt and non-adapt by solid phase extract plate. After that, measure the radioactivity of adduct fraction by wicked scintillation counter. This shows uh, just one example of study design we can offer. One positive control, like nephazodon as a strong positive control, and one solvent control is included in the study. The concentration of test article is 1, 100 micromolar. What the throughput? We can evaluate 30 compounds per plate. The endpoint is expressed as formation weight of reactive metabolite, per hour per milligram protein. This slide shows our data of system trapping. The left figure shows the correlation between our system trapping and glutathione trapping that is previously reported. As you can see, there is a very strong correlation. The correlation coefficient is over 0.9. The white table is comparison with previously reported data 
of sustained dropping. The middle column is our data. The values are almost the same with us. From these data, I can say our system dropping study is useful to evaluate reactive metabolites. Finally, I want to inform you of a special offer. We are currently offering special price for this study. To get more detailed information about this offer, please use contact us form on Sexygenotex website. Thank you for watching. I'm looking forward to work with you.